As the lights dimmed, a wave of anticipation swept through the crowd. The stage came alive with pulsating lights and deafening screams. Harmonies began to fill the air when out emerged the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> the energy was electric as they belted out their hit songs, captivating everyone in the audience. This was a memorable night for me, not only because it was my first concert at the age of 14, but also because it was my first time experiencing something that I didn't fully understand until much later. Like most 14-year-olds and frankly, most people, I didn't know that going to one really loud concert could cause hearing damage. I mean, after all the symptoms I experienced for the first time that night, muffled hearing and ringing in the ears, it eventually subsided. So what was the concern, right? So I continued, I continued to subject myself to loud sounds at college football games and noisy bars, oblivious to the irreversible harm I was causing. The energy and the intensity of these loud environments can make them irresistible. There's a common affliction that is shared between about 15% of us. It's a complex phantom sensation known as tinnitus, a ringing, a buzzing, a hissing in the ears. How many of you experience this? Excessive noise exposure can cause permanent damage to your inner ear, and this is often the culprit for tinnitus and hearing loss. This type of hearing damage is referred to as noise-induced, and it's essentially preventable. And yet the amount of education on hearing conservation is concerning. There's a recent survey that was published by the CDC highlighting that only 30% of children report having received an education on hearing conservation. Alarming statistics reveal that up to 17% of teens already have signs of noise-induced hearing loss. I believe it is necessary to integrate comprehensive hearing and noise education into the school curriculum and for school districts to implement procedures aimed at minimizing noise exposure and promoting healthy hearing habits. But the outcome of noise exposure goes beyond just the repercussions of hearing damage and tinnitus. Researchers have discovered a connection between hearing loss and dementia. People who have hearing loss are up to five times more likely to develop dementia. In my role as an audiologist, I have witnessed the detrimental impact that untreated hearing loss has on cognitive abilities. One patient whom I refer to as Mr. Johnson left a mark in my memory. From our initial encounter, it was obvious that Mr. Johnson severely struggled with hearing conversations. His family had become increasingly concerned while observing his behavior during social gatherings as he was becoming more withdrawn and isolated. Despite my making recommendations for hearing devices to improve his ability to communicate with others, Mr. Johnson decided not to move forward. As time passed, I ended up receiving word from his family that his condition had progressively worsened and he was eventually diagnosed with dementia. Neglecting your hearing loss can negatively affect your brain. Your brain has to work harder and harder to process sounds, which leaves fewer and fewer resources for other cognitive processes. This constant strain on your brain, known as cognitive load, can lead to faster brain atrophy. This is one explanation behind why hearing loss and dementia might be linked. Another idea suggests that when hearing loss occurs, your brain receives reduced or distorted input and this lack of stimulation can cause changes in your brain. Most notably, what they've seen through imaging studies is that the regions of your brain responsible for processing auditory information, they shrink. And this shrinkage can accelerate cognitive decline. Unfortunately, Mr. Johnson's story is not unique. Countless individuals suffer in silence, completely unaware of the consequences of untreated hearing loss. The Lancet Commission on Dementia has identified 12 modifiable high-risk factors for dementia. 8% of dementia cases are attributed to hearing loss, and that amounts to nearly 800,000 new cases of dementia every year. This critical link underscores that hearing loss is the most modifiable of all dementia risk factors. As hearing loss can be mitigated through education, prevention, early diagnosis, and treatment. Now, typically hearing loss comes on gradually with age, but it's not until people notice a significant disruption in their daily lives that they will even consider addressing their hearing impairment. In fact, on average, it takes people approximately 10 years from the moment they start noticing hearing difficulties until they actually do something about it, 10 years. 
I'd argue most of you wouldn't wait a decade if you couldn't see your TV, right? There is no cure for hearing loss. Hearing devices are currently the best treatment option to manage this progressive degenerative disorder. However, a staggering 80% of people who could benefit from a hearing device don't wear one. Most people don't see hearing loss as an important health condition causing delays in their treatment. I can't tell you how many times I've had a patient say to me, my hearing loss is normal for my age, right? Society may think it's normal, but I say it's not. Additional barriers to treatment include costs, people's concerns about their appearance and the social stigma, and having limited access to quality treatment. Hearing devices and auditory training programs allow people to regain effective communication skills, remain socially connected, and nurture a healthy brain. There is growing evidence to support that wearing hearing devices can reduce your risk of dementia. My career as an audiologist has enabled me to help numerous people with hearing loss and tinnitus. It has also opened my eyes to helping myself. Now I'd like to take a moment, I want you to all envision, what does someone with hearing aids look like? What image comes to your mind? Well, I happen to be one of those people who wears devices. Pretty cute, right? I never anticipated finding myself in the position of being my own patient but starting treatment has proven to be the best decision, and I urge you to do the same. We have a responsibility to share this knowledge and raise awareness, because if one conversation about hearing loss could potentially protect someone from the consequences of dementia, depression, and reduce quality of life, why not have that conversation with everyone? I encourage you to prioritize your hearing today. Hearing intervention is not just about improving your hearing abilities. It's a vital element of living a healthy lifestyle. I also encourage you to have a conversation with your kids and your grandkids about noise exposure and be a positive role model. Now is the moment for us to focus on hearing health and diminish the occurrence of dementia because it's never too early to start. Thank you.